Alexandria may be celebrating its 275th anniversary, but my people have been here since time immemorial. Not very far from where we are now in Southwest Virginia and beyond are the ancestral homelands of the Cherokee people. Since the 1500s, our lands have been invaded, stolen from us and our lives taken by numerous European nations and people. From Spain, to the UK, to France, to the US. The one thing they all have in common is their willingness to cause death, destruction, and mayhem, all for the sake of Christianity, capitalism, and power. There isn't a single issue that native people and nations of the so-called US aren't dramatically impacted by. We have the highest rates per capita of any other racial or ethnic group of rape, kidnapping, murder, and trafficking of our women, girls, and two-spirits. And for those who don't know, uh, two-spirit is uh, a gender identity for some of the people of our tribal nations in this country, and it comes with specific roles within one's tribe. So the same can be said for murder by police, incarceration, food insecurity and starvation, suicide and houselessness, with some of the lowest rates of access to resources such as the internet, healthcare, education, and even banks. Our lands are some of the most polluted, but are also the most crucial to protect if we have any chance of saving what's left of the world's environmental and climate health. Our food sources, such as bison and salmon, have been severely restricted or even eradicated from many of our diets. Many of us struggle under the weight of historical and intergenerational trauma. And as a result of all of this and so much more, we now have the highest rates of disabilities per capita in the so-called US. In fact, anywhere that I've found data, such as the so-called Canada, Australia, and Aotearoa, known as New Zealand, the indigenous people have the highest rates of disabilities of all populations. It isn't a mere coincidence that the indigenous peoples of the so-called US find ourselves struggling with similar issues as Palestinians. Palestinian children now suffer the highest rates of limb amputation in the world. The IDF has had a shoot to maim policy for many years, meaning they purposely disable Palestinian people, just as the police in the so-called US purposely shot a native woman in the eye, leaving her for disabled at life at the Standing Rock Reservation in 2016 during the no dapple encampments. As the Palestinian lands are being stolen, they're being sold to colonizers to do with what they'd like, despite the fact that this breaks international law. We Cherokees are no strangers to this. Despite the US Supreme Court ruling in favor of Cherokee tribal sovereignty and rights to our ancestral homelands in Worcester v. Georgia, President Andrew Jackson, Jackson ordered the removal of tens of thousands of native people from a variety of tribal nations to what was then known as Indian Territory, now present day Oklahoma. 16,000 Cherokee people were forcefully removed from our lands. It's estimated that 4,000 of us died. 25% of our population died during the removal due to starvation, exposure to the elements and disease. Not even 100 years after removal, the government yet again broke its own laws by stealing our lands for the creation of Oklahoma as a state. People from around the world rushed to Oklahoma for what was known as the land run, where they lined up and ran when a shot was fired, they placed a stake in the ground and claimed the land as theirs for free. By stealing our lands, colonizers expanded the enslavement of African people, exploited newer immigrants to build their infrastructure, colonizers, sorry, destroyed the lands and further oppressed women. Oklahoma has for many years had the highest rate of incarcerated women in the so-called US. Depending on the statistics you look at, Oklahoma is also ranked anywhere from 43rd to 50th worst state for education. Our schools in Oklahoma don't teach the true history of the country or those lands, but they'll teach the Bible now. Many of these actions 
like teaching the Bible in public schools, are being taken by right-wing Christian Zionists who only want Israel to exist for the Christian rapture, not the well-being of Jews as they claim. As a journalist, I'm horrified by the number of us around the world who have had our lives and freedom threatened and stolen from us for telling the truth. There have been more journalists murdered in Palestine than any other war zone in the world. I've watched in horror and with rage as the Palestinian hospitals and medical facilities are attacked and decimated with US bombs and munitions. I can't even begin to count the number of times I've been completely vulnerable in hospital beds unable to move. As a queer person, I am fed up with hearing Zionists make anti-queer claims that if queer people lived in Palestine, we'd be thrown off roofs. As if there are queer Palestinians, and as if the Christians of this nation aren't willing and attempting to criminalize my very existence and kill me and other queer people. I watch as all of our lives and issues are so deeply intertwined with each other, yet some of our oppressed communities are too busy being the oppressor. Nonprofits and organizations like Capital Pride, Human Rights Campaign, or Disability In have far too many, excuse me, we have far too many in some of our own communities who are happy to be in league with warmongers and genocidal trash. We must be in solidarity with each other, as none of us are free if we are our own, if we if we're all not free. And we will never find our liberation, freedom, and justice if we don't fight back against the powers that be. Asking nicely in meetings with politicians, voting, or other attempts to change the system from within will never work. Before coming to journalism, I worked in politics. At one point, I was even considered a Democratic Party insider. And what I saw was enough for me to become a radical leftist. The Democrats no more care about my life, your life, or Palestinian lives than the Republicans do. Israel committed more wretched atrocities today by bombing the Al-Mawasi refugee camp while supposedly looking for terrorists. Under democratic administrations, Palestinians have been labeled as terrorists, just as they did the native people of these lands. Despite the will of the people, Biden and the Democratic Party continue to send weapons and support to Israel. They are guilty of genocide, but they have repeatedly made it clear they won't stop. American democracy is a farce. We must be willing to sacrifice our lives and our freedom for the betterment of our communities and those that are oppressed. Genocide in Turtle Island, the Congo, Sudan, Palestine, and beyond will never end otherwise. So before I go, I wanna get you all to do a chant with me. So I want you to go deep down inside and find all of your anger, your righteous rage, your pain, whatever it is that fuels you to be here, and I want you to say after me, as loud as you can, from Turtle Island to Palestine, we will be free. You got it, everyone? Three, two, one. From Turtle Island to Palestine, we will be free. One more time and louder. From Turtle Island to Palestine, we will be free. One more time. From Turtle Island to Palestine, we will be free. Wado, thank you.